What is going on, Governor? It's just cool here, and today we're going to do a full commander guide on Kiera, including how to unlock her and why I think she may become the best epic commander in Rise of Kingdoms. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Kiera, who, because of her fourth skill, might just be the very best epic we have ever seen in Rise of Kingdoms. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, then consider subscribing to the channel for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. We are a sponsored creator, and let's get right into the mix. The reason that Kiera, the newest epic commander, is so amazing for Rise of Kingdoms is because of her fourth skill. It increases the skill damage taken by the target for upwards of 80%. My mind is blown. That is phenomenal. It's better than other commanders we've seen, including the legendary, that's right, legendary Tamaris, who is increasing the skill damage taken by the target by an upwards of 50%, but you have to stack up to build up to it, and it's complicated. This debuff right over here on Kiara is amazing. Now, when we review a commander, we typically review the skills, we talk about the talent trees, how you unlock, and then lastly, the pairings. We're going to do this in a slightly different order. We're going to start with how do you unlock this commander? Then we're going to review the skills, then we'll go into talents, and lastly, the pairings. Because the unlock for this commander is very different than what we've seen for other commanders. It's not too much of a surprise that Kiera is a commander you will get by completing Soroli Crisis events and using the coins that are offered during that event. Each head is going to cost you a cool 200 Soroli Crisis coins, and it looks like you can get an upward of 50 every single time the Soroli Crisis is run. Uh, we were given this information from someone who is experiencing this event right now in Kingdom 2. So that's how we were able to peep this information. Now, you may already be starting to do some math here. Uh, for 200 coins ahead, maybe you could just unlock them, get the 10 Epic Commander Sculptures, and then you need about 440 sculptures to max out an epic. Well, the downside here is that you have to get her sculptures from the shop. You can't use universal heads on Kiera. Now, this is obviously a bit of a bummer, but at the same time, we are talking about literally the very best epic, in my opinion, in Rise of Kingdoms. And we'll get to why in just a minute. What I want to talk about right now is how long this means it's going to take for you to unlock her. This is some napkin math, so it's directionally correct. But if you could do Hell Difficulty, and there are three bosses currently, this event shows up every two weeks, you get to do three attempts on each boss, 750 currency per kill, you're looking at six and a half months to max out this commander. If you're doing it on Nightmare, you're looking at eight months. Now, that's a very long time. We are talking about the best epic in the game. However, what gives me some hope is that we know that there are two more bosses that are going to come into the game. If those bosses also offer the same amounts of currency, and they might be more currency, we don't know, they might be less, but if they were the same amount, um, and all five bosses were available, and you could do three attempts on each, we're looking at four months to max out this commander on Hell Difficulty, or about five months on Nightmare. That, again, is a long time, especially for accounts that, like, look, mine and yours has probably been around for a while, but for folks that are, you know, still less than 10 million power and they're starting to work on this stuff, you know, the fact that it's going to take probably for them like six to eight months to get the best epic in the game, I don't know, it seems like a reasonable chase, but it's going to feel like an eternity for those that have older accounts. Now, let's get into a bit more of why I think she is literally the best epic commander in the game. 
Obviously, I mentioned this debuff is very, very, very important. Being able to make the target take 80% extra skill damage taken is huge. This is going to be crucial in Ark of Osiris, even Ark of Osiris League. Um, I mentioned that, and it's funny because now I've been proven wrong, but not for the reason I thought. I mentioned long ago that this commander right over here, Legendary, was always going to be meta in Rise of Kingdoms because she makes the target take an upwards of 50% extra skill damage. So when you're an Ark of Osiris and you're swarming a target down, everybody dealing damage to that target is going to do extra skill damage. However, this debuff over here really one-ups that with the 80% debuff. I'm very curious to see if the two will stack or if having this hit will make Tamaris' debuff fall off, would act, which would actually be kind of a downside. Um, the Mutineer, we have a bit less control over when we apply this debuff. It's going to be once every, uh, you know, 10 seconds on average. That's not really how it works. It's a 10% chance for this thing to fire off. And we don't know if there's an internal cooldown. An internal cooldown means that there might be some amount of time after you've actually had this apply before it could trigger again. Or if you could have it trigger back-to-back, -back, two turns in a row, we don't know until we actually get our hands on this commander and start to test it. Now, if we just get a quick glance at the other skills, we've got an AoE for 1,000 damage factor, hitting up to three enemies, very solid, does slightly less damage for the more targets you hit, but overall you're doing more damage. 35% extra bonus damage to Barbarians, and possibly an upwards of 35% additional damage if you're in Soroli Crisis or Ian's Ballads. The wording on this is a little unclear. I expect that will get updated. 20% of Archer stats is very solid. The Expertise skill makes it for every target you hit. You're going to do a total of 400 extra damage factor. That's 200 damage factor for two seconds. Um, if you're hitting three targets, that's bananas and very, very powerful. She's going to be very good for situations where you care about skill damage and you care about AoE, and it's kind of remarkable that I would even potentially pair her with Sun Tzu, but we'll get to that in just a minute. This commander is alarmingly good. They're going to be very, very, very strong in my opinion. Now, the trees that they have available to them support what they're doing. Unfortunately, they don't really emphasize the Mutineer because this is based on your normal attacks, so nothing in your talent trees can really impact this. It's just a chance to trigger from your normal attacks. There's no way to make it so you do normal attacks to more targets, although that would be busted. Um, so when we talk about the talent trees I think you should use for this commander, I actually am going to take a quick look at Kusunoki, who also has the Archer and Skill Trees. I would recommend something like this. This is going to be really solid, especially with the additional damage factor uh, that you'll get from the Expertise on Kiera. I like the Archery Tree because we're not actually concerned about having a Rage Engine on this commander. I suspect you'll get more damage with a tree that looks like this. If you did, however, want to go Primary Skill Tree, I do have a build I can show you using Herman. I would recommend something like this, going all the way to the top of the skill tree, heading up for Venomous Sting, getting the extra Rage Gen from Razor Sharp, and cashing in on Full Quiver for the extra attack. A slightly different route you could go if you wanted some additional March Speed, which I think is a very worthy consideration would be to use this build I was recommending over here, but to shave off some points in order to put them into peacekeeping. You shave off four points over here, another four points over here, that's eight total, another uh, six from these two, and then two more over here, so another eight. That gives you 16 points to work with. What would I do with those? 16 points, as it turns out, is exactly enough to go all the way to the top of Thoroughbreds. Let's confirm that. Okay, it's actually 18 points to get Thoroughbreds maxed, but even if you don't max it, even if you don't max it, you would miss 6% of the march speed. You're still looking at a lot of extra march speed. This is also something I would recommend if you're going to use this commander for barbing as a primary to level them up. Um, Insight's going to reduce your AP cost. 
You're also going to have quick study giving you extra experience. And the march speed over here is really solid. The march speed over here is really solid. I think that could be an okay way to go if you're going to start to level them up as you go. Let's head back to the commander view here and do my favorite part of this video. It's the pairings. You know I love doing the pairings. You have so many good choices here. It's honestly astonishing. Um, Kira does care about archers. She does care about archers, and that is from her third skill. And by the way, when we talk about skilling her up, max the first skill, then star her all the way up, then, then and only then put additional points on, because you want all your extra points to land right over here. That's the sweet spot. It's going to take a lot of skill ups to max out that last skill, but it's going to be worth it. Now, on those pairings, Sun Tzu, whoo, baby, that's a gangbuster pairing. Bring all archers. You could have Sun Tzu as the primary. I think you're going to be better off with Kiera as the primary. Since you're going to have full archers, you may as well have the archer tree. Sun Tzu is going to make it so you do extra skill damage. He's going to give you a rage engine. You're just going to have an AoE monstrosity across the two of them. That sounds phenomenal. The two best commanders that are epics in the game, pair them together, boom, glorious. Other commanders that are really, really solid would include Herman for the march speed and the utility of the silence. That I think is actually pretty awesome if you're on that free-to-play route and what you're trying to do is just bring utility to the table, which I think is really solid for the free-to-play folks or low spenders to do. Um, you get the two-second silence, and then also you've got that chance of increasing the still damage taken by the target. Very solid. Herman also has some rage gen, which is honestly quite underrated. I think that the two are a solid pair. I also think that, look, if you're looking to do a ton of AoE, Kusunoki and also Kiera are going to give you an insane amount of stats total to archers. Their downfall is that they don't have the march speed, which is why that alternate build I was describing going into peacekeeping could be really helpful to give you a little bit more legs on the battlefield. You can, of course, pair with a commander like Joan of Arc. Uh, I would prefer probably a Joan of Arc primary until you level up enough that you're actually beyond level 50 because the integration tree is not very good. At that point, Kiera probably should be the primary. I think that you could use CPO and bring full archers, but like, I just don't think that's really what the two are trying to do. I mention it only because CPO is going to make her a bit more tanky, which means she's around for longer to apply that sweet debuff. A more natural pair would be a commander like Boudica, who also is a peacekeeper. So if you're killing barbs, that's going to get out of hand. Um, Boudica should be the secondary uh, for the same reason that Joan of Arc should be the secondary. The integration tree is not very good once you hit a certain level. You're really not going to want Boudicca to be primary. The exception will be if you're creating a barbing combo and you're primarily in on the peacekeeping tree and skill tree. For battling other players, you're going to want to have Kira primary. For barbing, of course, Lohar is going to be fantastic. The last high quality mention here is going to be Osman at the epic tier. Um, you're going to want to go all in on the skill tree. The thing that's sort of missing from Kira is a way to generate extra rage. So while these two are going to be a fine pairing, I don't think they're going to be gangbuster because you don't have a way to really further power out sort of Osman. In fact, in that regard, I actually think Herman is a better pair with Osman because he actually does have some extra ways to generate rage from his skills, whereas Kira does not. So, of course, that number one pairing is going to, in my opinion, be a Sun Tzu, followed by Kusunoki and Herman, which are also great pairs because your Sun Tzu might be deployed elsewhere because he's just such a freaking amazing commander. At the legendary tier, there are commanders that we should be looking at to pair with. One very obvious pairing is going to be Ethelfled. They both do a ton of AoE damage, which is really solid. Use Ethelfled primary to debuff the target, and then boom, Kira does extra damage as the secondary. Love that as a pairing. You're going to want to bring mostly archers to take advantage of Kira's skills. When we look at some of these archer commanders, you have a lot of options here. I think, obviously, Esong for just crazy AoE is going to be phenomenal. The two make for a great pairing, and it's obviously <laughs> just you got so many choices with Esong. He's the first legendary you should max, in my opinion. Just phenomenal commander. Uh, continuing on, something that I do really like 
from a utility standpoint rather than a damage standpoint. And again, free to play should focus on utility. I think El Cid is actually a deceptively good pairing with Kira. Um, your active skill is going to disarm the target. That means for one second, they have no ability to use their active skill. They do no normal attack damage. They do no counterattack damage. That is very powerful as a debuff. And pairing with Kira, who's going to make it so they take 80% extra skill damage, is awesome. Uh, you also get the march speed that you desperately needed, as well as the wheels you needed, 25% extra march speed, to get away when you are in trouble. El Cid is deceptively good as a commander that you can pair. And what's kind of exciting about El Cid is that you know, you can max the first skill and maybe also the second. And after that, you can take them, you know, 1-1 one, one for the last couple skills. You start using them on the battlefield. That will be if you're using him as a primary. It actually doesn't matter if he's the primary or the secondary in this configuration. So you could use Kiara primary, which would be totally awesome to do. Uh, and if you're using the peacekeeping tree, then she will need to be the primary. There are, of course, a couple new archers we can talk about here. Tamaris is a fascinating commander to pair uh, with Kiara. I don't know whether or not this skill will stack, which offers, it's actually 45% additional skill damage at max. If they do stack, Whew, that's an interesting pairing to have together. If they don't, um, then you probably want to avoid using them together. The last commander who offers an insane amount of synergy, if you can expertise them. Ramses does a lot of things that you wanted here. He's going to give your march a bunch of sustain, which is fantastic. March speed when you're getting beat down. Uh, and also, if you can get to the expertise skill phenomenal utility. If you're making a march in Ark of Osiris and you are a big spender and what you're doing is supporting a swarm onto a structure, then you're going to want to have Ramses and Kira, a phenomenal archer combination for huge debuffs onto the target that is getting swarmed down. I don't exactly know no, I mean, I think I do know. I, I, I'm i guessing here, but I think that if you're picking between, like, oh, do I bring Ramses and El Cid or Ramses and Kiera? I think Kiera's the slam dunk pick. If for no other reason, if for no other reason than that 80% skill damage boost, it's just insane. Especially if you're using a rally combo that does big skill damage. Yeah, for swarming down a structure... That just seems so phenomenal. There are some commanders you could use that don't care about a troop type, like Freddy and Caesar. I think those are going to be fine pairings, but I find it just a little bit confusing why you're going to put them together. Um, you could use Caesar because he's going to be very tanky. It'll let you bring more troops to the battlefield. That maybe is a choice you could make, and Kira is the secondary, but... Like, let's stick to some utility archer commanders if the thing that we're trying to do is have utility and use archers, you know? Uh, you could use Mehmed. The only reason I find him more acceptable for an Ark of Osiris-style situation is because he's doing AoE damage, which you care about, but he doesn't have any more rage engine, which Kira, like, kind of wants but doesn't need. There is, I suppose, one other archer I didn't talk about, and that is Artemisia. Um, Artemisia you could use... Also for AoE is going to be very solid. Also is going to be offering a lot of stats, which is very solid. I'm not exactly sure you want or need the silence here. Like, this is not really doing much for you. As a pairing, they're fine. I, maybe I'll maybe I'll eat my, my words here, but, but like, what Kiera's bringing is utility. So I want to pair with another commander that does utility. Ramses would be my pick there. Whew. A lot that we've talked about this in, the, in this video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like onto the video. That helps out the channel. And let me know down below in the comments what pairing you think you would use and how you feel about the amount of time it's going to take to unlock this commander. To me, that feels a lot like when Ethelflaed came into the game where it's like, come on, I'm sitting on a million expedition currency. Can't I expedite this? But the answer is no. You have a chase. It's a grind. I suppose we should expect that for a commander that is released this way and is honestly going to very likely be the single most powerful epic in Rise of Kingdoms. Until next time, my friends.
You have fun smashing the kingdom.